Hey, this is Cameron uh, coming to you today to do a quick, um, probably not quick, uh, but a tutorial on using the um, Ruby route editor software. Uh, a lot of stuff out there. A um, little bit of it's confusing. Some of it's based off of some of the older versions of the route editor. So uh, I've spent the last week just in there playing around, doing multiple test uploads and, and things, just kind of see what works best. Uh, I've learned a lot, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. So um, if you're not familiar with the Ruby platform, um, this is the Ruby AR. Uh, this is similar to Zwift. It's going to hook up to your smart trainer or smart bike and uh, give you similar features to what Zwift's doing. One of the cool things it does is it actually gives you real uh, high-def video of the route that people have taken and then synced up with their GPS data. Uh, so that's what we're going to be going over today. Um, my wife and I have been uh, – she's she's uh, became an, a Ruby ambassador recently, and she just loves it. She's put in – 1500 miles i think in, during the covid um thing we've got going on now so she's really loving it love them getting to see some of these great european routes that we may never get over to uh getting to see the beautiful little villages and the and the towering um, cliffs and she's really enjoying it so uh, i'm more of a zwift guy but i have been playing around with it and more and more i'm actually liking ruby and will probably cancel my zwift membership and just use this exclusively um, so what I want to show you today is as I've been playing around with that, seeing if I do want to make that switch, uh, I've been playing with the route editor and I want to teach you guys what I've learned. And, um, there's a few things I don't know and feel free to drop them in the comments. If you know the answers to any of my questions, I'm going to drop. So, uh, go ahead and exit out of the AR. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the virtual training, um, route editor. Now, one of the problems I've had is a lot of the videos out there are for an earlier version of this, and they have features in there that aren't in here. Uh, there's things in the new version that aren't in the video. So uh, really a lot of trial and errors got to me where I'm at. I'm using um, Virtual Training Route Editor 3.6.6690. That is as of June 26, 2020. So take that with a grain of salt. If you're looking at this a year from now, it may not be the same. So to start with uh, looking around, you've got your three tabs up here, users, routes, and route editor. Users is just where you sign in and it shows you who signed in in their profiles. Uh, routes is when we've created a route. Uh, these are stored locally on our computer until we upload them to the Ruby servers. So that's where these are listed here. You can see these are all the same. I've been doing a lot of trial and error on that one um, route that I've been working on. Uh, and then the other one is the route editor. Um, so that's where we actually build our routes or we edit existing ones. So this is one that I've done. It's uploaded to Ruby. You can write it right now. I didn't like the quality of the video, so I've gone back and made some tweaks to it. So uh, this one I will need to get uploaded. We'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Uh, what will happen is the current route I have in there is version one. Uh, the route will be there. It'll just be version two, indicating that some changes have been made to it. So uh, I'm gonna go over here to the route editor. So when you come into the route editor, what you get is this um, create a, how are you gonna create your route? So you can do it just by uploading your GPS data. Um, you can get that from your Garmin watch, uh, from for most of the, the any of the watches that have the GPS enabled. Um, I use Garmin, that's why I brought it up. So uh, you can just get the GPX or a TCX file. Um, they also take, I don't know what a HST file is, but it tells you all of them right here that they do. Um, Really quick, just if you're not familiar with that, and pull up Strava. Uh, I can come into a Strava, go into my ride, and it lets me export it right there into a GPX file. Just click on that, and it will download right there into it. Um, so really easy to do once you get the once you have your route in Strava. Uh, you can also come from Garmin Connect if you're using that. Um, I do both. Uh, Garmin Connect comes from um, up here and then when you're in the in the ride you've done you come over to the little gear button the settings option and then it gives you a couple of options to uh, export into one being in the uh, tcx file or the gpx which are both supported by ruby's route builder so um, just a heads up on that if you need it so when you're in this screen you're going to go ahead and uh, grab your i'm going to do uh, back let me back up a step sorry about that That's where I guess. Um, so your three options are just import the data directly, just that GPX file or TCX file, uh, or you can import the, GPX, the GPS data through the same method, or and at the same time you can import video. 
if you do it this first method, you can still add the video later. Um, this is just doing it all in one fell swoop. And then it also gives you the opportunity to sync the videos up. Um, so we'll be using this method here shortly. The last one is manually created. So if you've, if you've never ridden it or you didn't have your GPS or the data is bad, you can use this. It will pull up a Google map and then it lets you go point by point. So you can start clicking points and adding points onto the, the road you're going to do. Um, not going to show you that today because this is based around uh, importing the data. So I'm going to use this middle one. Uh, you get your little data import pop-up box. Your first step, it tells you is to import your GPS data. I'm going to come over here, go to my downloads. Uh, I'm going to use this morning ride. This is um, has been edited. Uh, I trimmed it up. I cropped it in Strava to get rid of some of the downhills because this was just going to be a climbing route. So click there, morning ride. Now it's loaded. I hit next. Uh, now here's a little uh, weird thing. Um, you got to select which one you do. I guess from back here you could load multiple in. So if I go to the previous screen, I could load another GPX file in. I don't know if that's so you can merge them together or what, but in this case, uh, you do have to click on the, the route. Once you click on it, it gives you your profile down here. So you know you're doing good when you see the profile. Um, now, some of the some of the weird stuff that, um, so one of, one of the weird things that a lot of the existing videos out there on YouTube about doing this are showing is there's an option for elevation smoothing. Um, this new version doesn't have it. I'm assuming it just smooths it out on its own, and that would just be kind of uh, I I don't know what Ruby calls elevation smoothing. I know in some of the other stuff I've done with with GPS GPS data, um, it does it it does take if you get a rogue point. So if your profile is going up like this, and all of a sudden you get one weird point because your system glitched or there was bad bad internet, you're under a tree going through a bridge, and it jumps clear up here, and you have this spike in your elevation. I know in other stuff I've done, elevation smoothing means it's going to look for those anomalies and kind of smooth them out. So instead of being like this on your on your profile there, it'd be a little more round, makes it look a little more um, a little more natural and a little less like you had a hiccup. Uh, so. If you see that in the other videos and you're wondering where it is, I've never found it. It might still be in there. I, I'm not the pro here. I'm just teaching what I've learned over this week. Um, but I have not seen it, and I'm assuming it's probably just built in now. Um, so I'm going to hit next. Uh, at this point, it's going to load the, it just loaded the GPS data in, and now it's asking me for my video. So just going to browse your computer. Um, go to wherever you saved your videos at. I'm going to go to Ruby. An Alpine loop. Um, you can see I've tried this multiple times. Uh, so I'm going to use this one right here, load it in, and then I'm going to hit next. So when I hit next, I'm going to hit finish. It's going to get this loading route and it's processing. It brings it up. When you're doing this fresh, it gives you the sync video start and finish. So it's going to it's going to ask you where does your video start versus where does it end in comparison to the GPS. So I'm going to hit continue. And it's just going to walk me through the steps really quick. This is very similar to what you've probably seen on other videos, so there's nothing really a lot to see here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in, and I can see that's basically where I started. Problem is, is my video, I was waiting for a car to pull into this side canyon called North Fork, um, so I didn't want to follow them up or have them backing up. So if I hit play, you'll see it doesn't do anything, but if you look in the back, you can see the trees are moving. So I'm recording. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fast forward a little bit to where I'm actually moving. Okay, there I start rolling out. The car's driven by. So um, now I've got it synced that that's where I want my start of my GPX. Uh, this way, if you were like in a parking lot and riding over to a trailhead or something, or uh, caught some flats and you just want it to be a climb, you can move the endpoint to where you want it. So I'm just going to leave it right where it was. Um, then I hit next. And you're going to do the same thing. Now one one little trick I saw is this is still the beginning thumbnail. Um, so what you have to do is you can see the trail, the G, the map now has moved my finish over there. If you zoom in, you can see that says finish. I'm at the summit of this climb. If you hit play for a second, it sometimes it does it and sometimes it. So what what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to the slider and just click on it and it it brings up where the video should be. So now you can see I'm at 26 minutes. I'm and that corresponds to 8.9 miles on my thing. And I just hit next, and now it's syncing those two up, so it knows how to play. Uh, once you're done there, it's going to go ahead and load everything in. So quick tutorial around this screen because this is 
a little confusing. Um, what you've got is you've got some of your GPS editing things. So if you're getting a waypoint or you need to add one in because your your elevations are wacko, uh, you can do some adding of points and things. That's what this is. Above that, you have these three options of GPS points, um, points of interest, and video points. GPS are just showing the um, – it's going to show over here what it is that ties to this left screen or this screen on the right. Apologies. Uh, so when I've got GPS – um, selected it's over there you can also click on these little tabs and it'll switch them for you you can do it in two places so uh, that was a little weird I didn't understand why they did that from a user interface style but they did so um, just know that you can switch it from any so when we're on the GPS tab it's showing us the line here our route that's based off of that GPX file that I downloaded out of Strava when I zoom in you can actually start seeing the points that the the recorded um, throwing in a quick tip here I, I read a lot of things that said um, change your GPS setting to record a point every one minute. I did not do that. I wish I had because uh, it was kind of recording periodically as I go up. You can see they're kind of sporadic as I move my cursor along there. The little yellow dots jump. So um, I think the one point gives you more. It gives you more points and it helps with your elevation and your grade. So do that before you record. Make sure whatever device you're using is recording in a like one second period. Um, this will work. I've, there are some errors because of that, that it's recording periodically rather than every one second. And by periodically, I don't think it ever goes more than four or five seconds based off what I've seen, but definitely change that setting. Um, so that's the GPS. It just kind of shows you the course. Now, the next one are points of interest. So I've got no points of interest in here. So uh, points of interest are, they can they do two things from what I can tell. Again, if I'm wrong on this, Definitely drop me a comment and let me know, kind of correct it out. Uh, points of interest are exactly, from what I can tell, are exactly what it says, is that it's you're on a route, there's something interesting, maybe a waterfall or maybe the site of a historic battle or something you're going by or one of a famous, a famous mountain that's to the side of you or something. Um, so you can drop those in. Um, the other thing that I found points of interest does is uh, there's a lot of reference to splits and as far as I can tell, splits are like segments in Strava, uh, except for you got to build them right into the route rather than going in afterwards and adding them. From what I can tell, again, comment if I'm wrong. But uh, through the points of interest, you can create those splits. Now, I did read if you want to get your video certified, you do need to have point. Uh, you do need to have splits. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I'll show you how to do a point of interest here in a minute, uh, but that's what that is, is it just drops a point on here. It will flag it on your map down here, on your gradient, and when you're riding, you can actually see that. And when you get to a half a kilometer out from a, uh, from a, a point of interest, it gives you a – you're this close to the point of interest, uh, you know, 0.3 miles or, five, or 500 meters, and then it does a countdown. So you can kind of see that way if it is a segment that you're trying to mark uh, to get a PR, you know how far out you are and you know how much you have to sprint if you're behind. So we'll look at that here in a minute. Um, last one is the video tab. Now, when you click on that, sometimes you get these green and sometimes you don't. Now, one of the reasons – I'm using the GoPro 8. It does have GPS. I believe everything from the GoPro 5 on has GPS. You do need to enable it in the settings. But keep that in mind that this, as I record video, it's, in, it's embedding um, GPS points into the data of the video. So that's what all these little points are, is it's taken a point as I've been recording up and down that canyon. Um, sometimes they don't load. What I found I have to do is either switch tabs over and out or click down here if these show up, and then they'll show up. But if you've recorded GPS, they should be there. Uh, you can double click on it and it will take you to where your – so as I go, um, it will take you to where that point is. So here's one almost seven miles into my climb. It's up in here somewhere. Um, it's supposed to highlight it. I'm not – there it is right there. You can kind of see it, the yellow. Um, it doesn't put that point in front of the rest so you can see the full yellow. But if I zoom in, you can see it's got a little yellow. There you go. Right there you can see it. That's the point I'm at. So. Um, when I hit play from that point, the video should jump up to that to there. So um, I don't know if you noticed earlier, if you double click on a point, you can actually adjust that a little bit. So if you're saying, hey, that the video at this point is about five seconds behind, you can actually adjust it or you can adjust it by the scale and it will move it. You can also 
get out of this, you can actually click on it and drag it down a little bit. So as you're syncing the video up to where the map shows you you are, uh, you can manually do it. You can double click on that point. You can double click on the point over here. You get this little sync video window, and then you can adjust it up and down a little bit. Um, my first few tries, what I was doing was I, I wasn't, I thought the video and the map was off. I didn't want to go through and manually do so many points because there's a hundred and some odd points in there. So what I did was um, um, I went in and I manually deleted. So if I right click over here in this video window, if you right click and say delete point, you can get rid of that point. Uh, you can edit it. Um, you can also add your own later right there by right clicking. Uh, a lot of the videos, there's a, uh, one of the more prominent videos you find when you search on YouTube shows, shows the, the guy is just doing like this and he has no audio and he's just he's just all of a sudden he has this pop up. Uh, it's a right click is what I'm doing. Right clicking on the mouse and getting this menu um, and then I can insert my own. I'll show you why that's important here in a minute to help sync up the video. So that's really all it is. Uh, there's some things here. I'm going to give you guys a warning. Don't switch to Earth View and don't switch to Street View. Um, what happens is when you switch to Street View, uh, the little Google Street View guy, the little orange guy that you can drag over and put on the street where you want to see the the cool Street View that Google does, it stays on the map and it gets in your way. It's annoying. Um, the split just puts up uh, the map and the video. I leave it like this because you can also come down to the video and use this expand option here. And I click on it and then it brings it up here. And from there, I can use my little um, cursor handles, and I can make it as big as I want. So uh, I can I can do my own split the way I want. I can move this window over and, and split it. So uh, I'm telling you, I don't know if it's my computer, or my setup, or what. These don't use them. Um, they just cause problems. However, I'm going to tell you over here to the left where it says satellite and wiggle in the cursor. I switch to satellite every time because I. Actually, there's a little ski resort down here. I do some part-time work at the ski resort in the winter. Um, know this canyon very well. We ride this loop a lot. So me being able to see the physical stuff, uh, I, it helps me when I was syncing up the video. Now, in regards to syncing up the video, uh, my first few, I was probably three or four hours on each one. And my, every time my wife come in, she's like, you're not doing more. Stop. She felt bad that I was doing so much. Um, I just fixed my first one in about 20 minutes. Uh, actually, I did a whole new one in about 20 minutes. Turned out beautiful, or not 20 minutes, it was about a half hour. Um, so I've learned that some of the things I was doing that first time was were, were stupid best practices. Um, so trying to show you those things today too, uh, how to get those synced up, because that's kind of one of the biggest, biggest problems. Uh, at this point, I could literally just, I could send it to the internet, I can save it, and then send it to the internet and Ruby servers will start processing it and getting it ready as a route on their servers that you can ride. Uh, but I do like to do a little cleanup on it. So we're going to go look at that. Um, so one last thing about uh, navigating around the product is down at the bottom here. Um, you've got this little double thing. You can get rid of it if you need to expand down. It's just this little bar right there. You can see that little double bar. Click on that. We'll expand it up. Uh, you do have two tabs down here. One's the altitude and altitude and video. You're going to spend 98% of your time in the uh, virtual training route editor there. Um, the information tab is where you give it its name. It's like when you go save as in, in like Word or some document you're making, you got to save it as something. So I'm going to call this um, test Alpine, Alpine loop. Um, and then I'm going to go change the sport. I'm giving it a description. Climbing. Now, this is a full loop you can do. This is just the uh, south side of the loop. Um, so I'm going to call climbing Sundance side of the Alpine loop. Locals know, understand what that means. So, uh, But that's where you give it. And now once I get a name and a description in there, um, which my understanding is uh, the description and those kind of things help with the uh, certification. I could be wrong, but it seems like a few forums have mentioned you want a good description to help get your route certified to improve searchability and visibility in the Ruby um, AR platform. So I'm going to go ahead and save. It's going to do a little bit of work here now. It takes a second because it's got to process the video. So it's not really process. It's just kind of loading all the videos in and saving a, a big, big file. So now it says that you're good to go. Um, so at this point, it's just saved on my computer. It is not on Ruby's server. So um, I do want to do some syncing of it. So a couple of things that I've no I found 
is um, as I was writing my first trial, uh, I noticed I got these big spikes in the data. And so when you zoom in, you'll see the GPS was pretty good. This canyon right here is in a deep, narrow canyon. These walls up here are really tall, and they're not too far apart. So you don't get good accuracy from a GPS going up this canyon. So some of the points, you can see one there that went Hayward. Um, so uh, right here, um, you can move it down. But what I discovered, let me switch to altitude and video so I get back to my profile. Uh, watch, watch when I move this, what happens. Um, I'm altering it, and over here you notice my percentage changes because it thinks that right here up on this bank is this elevation, and it thinks where I moved this point to is somewhere up in here, which is higher. So it's giving you these spikes, and it's kind of hard to see. Let me um, see if I can get up by there. Well, what we can do is you can come over here to the right when you're on the GPS tab, and I've manipulated a point, so it's highlighted and checked. So I'm going to double-click that, and it's going to move the video up there. But um, So now I've got this little marker that says you. So um, now it's moved that to 8.3, but you can see right below it is 6%, and it's adjusted the point up after it or before it. And you can see, though, that I should probably be – 4.5 to 6%. Uh, and look at the video. You can see that there's clearly, let me pop that up big screen. You, you can see that there's no real steep pitches there. So it should not have, um, I shouldn't have that uh, really steep 8%. That's almost double what that initial point was. So it, it doesn't do that steep up. So I don't like moving those files like that. If it bugs you, you can do it. But what you have to do then is you have to come over here. And if you double click, now if you double click on the percentage, you're going to get a little pop up box. Now, if you double click on one where the, the, the key here, this little picture of a key is locked out, so I'm going to double click on this one, you get no GPS key point is. These points is between key points. I don't know what that means. I've never had to deal with key points before, but I can make it a key point by clicking on it. So all these grayed out ones, I don't know if there's some, I don't know, I don't understand what it is. But uh, you can make them all key points. So now when I come back to it and I say I want to adjust that 8.3, I can come in. Now, take a breath there. I've been talking really fast. apologize. Trying to get through this, though. Uh, I'm on that waypoint, and it's, it's, it's way off. So I can manually adjust it. And I know that I'm between 45 to 6%. So if I wanted to say eh, it should be somewhere in like 5.5, I can move it up and down to where I want it. So I'm going to put it 5.3. That's a good one. It will adjust the altitude based off of the the previous point, and that I'm at a 5.3 grade, and it'll say, well, 5.3 at the distance between those points should be this elevation. So now it see what it did is it changed it to 5.3, but it took my next point that was 9.6 and it moved it up. So what I found is I just kind of have to run them out. So this one I may just jump up to like six. Um, six uh, you can see those other ones that look a little more, more legit we're all about six percent so i'm on a pretty steady thing there so i'm just going to do about six percent again just see what happens uh, now it's going to adjust this one clear up to 15 percent and so if you come down to the profile here you'll see a spike and so that's what i'm trying to do is get rid of these spikes uh, i do have some um, points on this route where you go around some switchback corners and you you do kick up um, but overall, this thing runs about, I think, 7% all the way up. So I know that 15, I saw it jump, so I know it's, it's rogue. So I can double-click on it, and I kind of keep just um, rolling it out, maybe run it up to 6.5 just a little bit. I'm just trying to get something that looks a little more natural as to what it is. And I can use the video to say there is no steep part there. I understand sometimes you come into a road, and it kicks up a little bit, and you get a 12%, 13%. But in this case, I can see from the video where I'm at that that's not the case. So I'm just going to keep rolling them out about that 6%, and the one after it's going to jump. Now, I can just kind of go up a little higher. It's not going to be totally accurate, but I can go a little higher because um, actually it does kick up right at these little ledges. Uh, we call this the S turns. They will. They, it, it does kick up pretty good right there. But you see now, from now instead of being 15 or 12, it's down to 10. So I'm slowly kind of uh, rolling that out. Uh, think I think of it as like when you get a um, a bump in a rug or a, a you know where the rug in your rug in your house kind of pops up in the middle, and you just kind of keep working it out. It may pop up other rugs or some or other little parts that the rug may pop up. 
Um, I'm just kind of running it out, trying to get it up. So maybe I'll do another 7.5. At now you see down to 9.8. Um, I'm going to do this one up to like seven again. Hit OK. But that's how you do it. Now, now we're getting down into eight. We're slowly bringing that. We're slowly flattening that profile out. Um, now, the way I was doing it before was uh, to 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 um, move these points, and it created all these spikes. So if that doesn't bother you, I wouldn't worry about it. Like me moving that little point from up here back to the road. Uh, there are going to be little glitches. Um, you look on anywhere, even look on Strava and these other ones. They they get off a little bit. So if you don't bother it, I wouldn't worry about it unless you get a spike. Now here's a here's how I found you can uh, get rid of the the spikes that are anomalies that you don't want. This one literally has some 22% pitches in it that are not legit. There are no 22% pitches for like 20 feet in this thing. So I'm gonna go get rid of them. So up here I've got distance, altitude, and grade. And by clicking on them, I can sort this list by the grade. So when the arrow points up, I'm sorting from uh, I'm sorting uh, from small to the biggest. Now I'm going to sort down. So now I'm starting at the biggest and going down. So now I can say, well, okay, there's that 22. That 19 is not legit. 18. Most of these probably down through here are not legit. So I don't have to do what I was just showing you at every point, but I can go in and say, hey, I do have some anomalies. And they are painful. I tried riding this route today, and I hit that 22%, and it was just like a wall. I'm like, ah, oh, this stinks. So it is, that is one you'd want to get to. So what I'm going to do now is because you saw when I – I don't want to just go in here and adjust this percentage by saying, oh, I don't know what it should be. Maybe that's in a section of like 7%. So what I discovered is I'm going to double-click on the, on the mileage itself, and it's going to relocate me. So now it's put me uh, – this one is right above where we were just at. And it's saying there's a 22% pitch right in there. Uh, look at the video. You can see the video. There is not a 22% pitch there. Um, so, oh, lost my guy. Hold on. Where are we? Where are we actually? We're actually up higher. There it did jump. So this is the section of the road. You can look on that road and say, yeah, there is none. So uh, what I can do now is I can go back to the distance and sort by it. Now, now that I have this selected with a checkbox and it's blue, when I hit the distance. Now I can just kind of grab this the scroll bar and I can come down. There it is. That's that mile. There's the 22. But look at there, 3.7 before and 3.7 after. So I could look at the ele the elevation and I can say 57 5,763 feet, and coming out of it is 5,774 feet. Um, so I just want to split the difference to kind of keep that uh, grade in the middle. So I'm gonna actually this time I'm gonna Make sure the little padlock is unlocked um, so you can unlock that elevation. And I'm going to open that up, that dialog. So this time, instead of doing the percentage and having to keep manipulating the other ones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say 5,774 to 63. Let's do like 5,068 and see what that does to the grade. So that took it down to 13. It did change these a hair, and I don't mind too much because that probably is a – for for th th it's between three and four and a half, so I don't mind that. Uh, I'm gonna click here. Uh, I am gonna unlock it again because um, I do want to change it a little bit more. So maybe a um, that first one 63. So maybe go down to 64 there or something. Uh, that looks a little better. I mean it's not perfect. It's between there. Um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep if you're using a smart trainer, it's gonna keep it from having to shift, do quick shifts in, in like a, you know, like a 20 meter um, section of the road. So, uh, so that's what I, I've done on my other ones is I've sorted by grade, um, sorted from the biggest to the smallest. And then I've gone in and found them and just adjusted those. 11% uh, is, like I said, it's not out of the realms. Um, when you get up here to some of these higher switchbacks, some of these are those big deep corners you get. Uh, so it could be 11% for there for a little bit. So uh, I would just look for your anomalies, like the higher numbers there, and then you can go and adjust those. Um, that'll save you a lot of time just doing that little manual adjustment rather than trying to click this around and then changing the percentage, change the elevation. Just just find those anomalies and, and uh, just do the bad ones. Um, okay, so next we're going to look at the syncing of the video. We synced the beginning and the ending, ending with that auto sync. So um, I'm going to go back to the video now. And um, I'm going to hit play where we're at. So I'm going to actually move it up a little bit. 
to a spot a little higher. Okay, there's a good spot. So now I'm playing. So um, you do have this option right here that says follow video position. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 some of the earlier videos said to do that, but um, it seems to do it either way. So I, I think it may be something they used to do, but they you don't need now. It just does it automatically. Because when I can find my little guy here, uh, sometimes you have to stop and you have to kind of let it refresh. It kind of gets held up that it's not in the right place. So I'm going to put this guy up here and hit play. Okay, so now I'm coming up. I should be somewhere up in here now. There he is. I can see you. So what you can do now is I came around this corner right here, and I let some cars pass me, so I clipped out some um, in my video. Um, but now I've got that. Uh, I'm pulling back on the road. Now right up above me here, I'm going to zoom in on the map. This is why I like the 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 – uh, satellite view, you see the real picture. Uh, there are a couple little pullouts up here. So the more of these little sync points you have, the better off you are. Now I want you to see though, this is a good example. So here I am right here, but that corner the video is at is clear back down here. So that little white right there is uh, right up in here. It's where that, where are we at? Make sure we're in the right spot. It's right out here, the pullout. So I've got a couple, I my, my, Map is further ahead than the video. So I'm going to right click on this uh, video point and delete it. And I'm going to right click on this video point and delete it. Uh, you can manually move them so you can slide them up and down. Um, or you can double click on it and get the time and distance. And so you could say, oh, I'm about 10 seconds behind on the video. Or my guy's about five seconds fast. You can adjust the time. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, hey, my my little guy, my little, uh, where'd he go? Lost him. Let's hit the play button, see if I can get him to pop back up. Um, pause it, hit play. There he goes. Now he just popped up. Sometimes it takes a second. So, so again, my little guy is off. So I want to back the video up to that corner because I have a good reference point. I have that good pullout right down here. So um, I'm going to hit play. And as I come through the – leave the pullout and get back on the road, I'm going to get up the road a little bit. And I know that's about right there. That's about right in there. So now when I'm on the video tab, I can right-click and say insert a point, video point here. And um, now it's going to say, hey, this spot in the video is where my little you guy should be. So you just saw him. He just disappeared from up here. He's actually sitting right here. If I hit play, you'll see him pop in. Okay. So now. There he is, so I'm up the road further. Now, there is a little pullout up here that I'll be able to see in a second. So if we give it a – I'm going to go full screen so you guys can see a little bit. Okay, pause right there. See that little pullout? So that is like right in – where is that one at? Uh, you'll be able to find it somewhere right in here. Wow, it's not showing as well as it normally does when I was doing this earlier. Uh, but what you can do is basically uh, you can say I can see a point, um, this dirt, a tree, a road that comes in, something like that. And then you right click, get the little menu and say insert a point. And now it knows instead of being right there, it needs to be back here. And that's how you sync up the video and the map together. So the more of those you have, the more synced it is. But it also takes a lot of time. So I like to just kind of watch it and see where I'm at and see what's going on. Um, uh, so that's that's uh, how you sync the video, how you upload the GPX data, how you upload the video, how you can manipulate them around a little bit and sync them up. Uh, the only other thing to show you is those points of interest. So I'm going to zoom out a uh, little ski resort here, Sundance, Utah, um, Sundance Mountain Resort. So I figure that's a nice point of um, reference. This canyon below it is really steep, probably averages 7 or 8%. From here on up, it's probably 5 to the next marker. So this is a good point to say, hey, that's like a segment in for us in Strava. This would be a segment to, to where you enter the ski resort right there. So now when I'm on the points of interest tab, I can come over here and I can right-click and I can say insert a point of reference or a point of interest on the route. Uh, then I get this little point of interest window. So the first thing I can do is grab a photo. So uh, in my downloads, I can come in and say, hey, I went grab Sundance. There's a picture of the resort. Uh, it is a winter picture, but I like that. And I'm going to call this Sundance Mountain Resort. 
this is what when the little pop up that says you're nearing a point of interest shows up on your screen when you're um, when you're racing. Um, it's the name right here, and then you get a description: Sundance Mountain Resort, blah blah blah, etc. Now, here's the secret that I found. Uh, part of your certification is if you have splits in it. So let's go over here to the Ruby website. So here's the Ruby website. Um, hold on, that window gets locked, so I do have to I do have to save that point and then close that. Okay, now I can go back to the Ruby website. So I've searched on the map, uh, going to explore virtual routes, uh, found the route I want to do. Here's the one I here's the earlier version of this I did. Um, so I'm going to zoom in. Um, Right here, you've got your map, you've got your video, so that's the video I uploaded. Here's the splits. These are the splits. So the only thing I can assume is that when they say to get your route certified, they look for splits. Uh, that's what I'm assuming that means. And the only place I could find anything that talked about splits was when I do the when I do the point of interest, and I just open that up by double clicking over here on the point of interest. Uh, I have this option right here for splits. So then I hit save the change. So now when I upload this to Ruby, it will um, it will have that split. Uh, you'll see right here on the map there'll be a little marker. So you you'll see that there's a point of interest coming up. Um, so that's that's how I found you do the split. Uh, if it's just a point of interest, like hey here's a waterfall, this is such and such waterfall, uh, you can do it without the split. But if you're doing a point of interest and you're going to have that as some sort of a, I like to know my time from the start to here and from here up to, um, <clears throat> so this this route gets closed in the winter because uh, the, the Alpine Pass. So right up in here they have a gate. So my next one, my on my main one that I'm doing for this route, I put a point of interest up here at this Aspen Grove because that's where there's a little, uh, there's a gate, there's a little pay shack. You have to pay to drive over this and camp and everything right here. Uh, the gate sits right here, so it's a good place for a point of interest. And then do the split, and then I have a – I know my time between the two splits was a certain amount of time. So um, other than that, I think that's about everything you'd want to know. Uh, I'm going to hit the save route now. It's going to save this based off of what the name on the information tab was again. Okay, so now we've got it. It's saved successfully. Now we're going to go back to routes, and you're going to see here I have some multiple routes. These are what are stored on my computer. Right up in the corner, you do get this little option here. Uh, route was created on computer and not uploaded. So right now, what I can do is I can highlight it and select it. Uh, green is, green means you're selected. That's the route you're manipulating. Uh, I can hit upload to the internet. And this will upload it to um, Ruby servers. I can also come in and say, well, I don't want that. That was a stupid route. Let's get rid of it. It's, it's on Ruby now. I don't need to do any edits. I'm never going to edit it. Uh, this one, though... Um, this one, when I played it, I didn't get very good quality. This video was recorded from the front of my car at um, 10 at 4K, 60 frames per second. Uh, this is actually Ruby here when I was writing it this morning. I'm it's bouncy because I'm holding the camera, but you can see it's pixelated and it's not a good high def quality video. So in this case, I did come in and I edited it. So even though this is uploaded, I can hover over the the information little box here. And it says route was edited on the computer and not updated on the internet. So now what I want to do is update that. I want to send – what I did is I pulled the video out um, when I loaded into the route editor. So I'm in routes. Now I switched over to route editor. I can hit this remove video, and if I do it, it gets rid of the video, and then I can upload a new one. So that's what I did. So I've got a better video. Uh, again, I recorded in 1080 or uh, 4K and 60 frames per second. You don't need that. Um, if you look at my actual route, when Ruby processed it, they put it down to 2K, and it's uh, it's all pixelated. So uh, I went back and used Adobe Premiere, and I saved it into 1080p and or just 1080, and then 29 frames per second. I've I've read some stuff in the last 24 hours that said that's your best is 1080p or sorry 1080p 1080 and 60 frames per second. Um, so that's what I've converted it to. I added the new video in, resynced it up, made sure everything looked good. I fixed a few spikes that I found when I rode. And so now I'm ready. I can just highlight the one I want to update, and now I'm going to upload it to the internet. And it, it asks you for your location and a few other things, and I just hit continue. And now it gives you this con confirmation thing that says, hey, the video file is about 1.9 gigs. Uh, it does have data. It does have images because I uploaded images with my points of interest, and it does have video. 
I have got rid of the sound because you don't need sound on it. Um, so plus you just hear the sound of the wind on it anyway. So I didn't. I got rid of my sound in my original video. It's telling you all that. Now I can just hit upload, and it's going to initialize and start sending it up. So um, at this point, it's uploading. Uh, I have a really slow upload speed at my house, so it it takes forever. So what will happen is back in Ruby, uh, you will be able to see that. Um, this is version one. Somewhere it'll show you right here, current version. This is the current version, but you'll be able to see other versions. Uh, so I'm just updating my route to a new version. So um, that's pretty much everything. I know this video is really long, but um, it's everything I learned that I couldn't find on the internet. So um, you can close this, and it will just let you know that it's uploading right here, and it gives you the other ones. So uh, one last thing is once it's uploaded, Ruby servers have to process it and get it ready and get it into their formatting and how they like it and everything. So it's uploading to their servers. Uh, that will probably take me about a half hour at my current speed. And then what's going to happen is um, uh, to, uh, in about eight hours for this size video and for the 1080, 60 or 29 frames per second it's going to take about six to eight hours for them to process after that i'll get an email at my ruby email address and um or the email address i used with ruby uh they'll email me and say your route is ready and it's now public um one thing we found though is the ruby ar app they're not they don't seem to show up in the search in the ar app immediately so what we did is we came in here. I'm going to remove that from my favorites. We find that uh, we find it in the web page under Explore Virtual Routes, and then we I've been using the map, but you can search by name here, and you can find it. So um, since I let Ruby know my location in their web browser, I can now it pulls me up in in Utah, and then I can now come in here and say, okay, there's my route right there. Uh, missing one of my routes. Oh, because I'm uploading the new one, so it's it's pulled mine out, but it would be here. Uh, once you find it, you can hit the favorite button. So if I come to this, this is another guy who did the same one. His is just GPX data, no video. I can add it to my favorites. Once I do that, then in the the uh, Ruby AR app, it, it, we can go to my favorites and find it. So I don't know if it has to wait a certain while before the AR app is able to find it, but my wife and I have both noticed it's a little hard to find that new route once we once we add it. So uh, adding it to your favorites will be there. So um, really, that's everything. Uh, quick shout out. Um, where are we going here? Oh, right here. Uh, my wife, I told you she's a Ruby ambassador. So if you want to try Ruby out, you can use Meg Hill, H-I-L, 20 to get a discount. Um, feel free to follow her and uh, me on Instagram. Um, we love to share our adventures and love to interact with you guys and learn more about you guys and where you're writing. Uh, Definitely add us on Ruby. You can friend us on Ruby. She's Megan Hill. I'm What Me Worry 44, I believe is my is my username. Um, but yeah, go ahead and uh, give us a follow, and interact with us. We'd love to hear from you guys. And any of the things I've said wrong, I take criticism really well. Go ahead and drop it in a comment and let me know that there's a better way of doing it or answer one of my questions. So uh, thanks everyone. Hope you guys have some great writing.